Hey, 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 the gang's all here. Let's get this party started. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is the first weekend of May. Now, as most of you are already familiar with, what I do on this show is focus in on a hot penny stock of my choosing, which makes sense because I am really this deep into penny stocks every single day. I trade penny stocks from bell to bell. I post news every day all over the net about penny stocks. And I make videos on penny stocks. But to do that, I've got to find one. So I'm constantly looking for a stock under five bucks that has heat, that has the potential to make us money. Or dare I say, I came through with flying colors today. <laughs> this is ticker AITX, Artificial Intelligence Technologies. Now she has not got a big catalyst going on right now. What she's got is a river of catalysts. She's constantly putting out news about more devices and robots that they're selling. What has changed, though, is her chart. She has had a breakout at the beginning of the month, and I can't correlate the breakout to any piece of news or filing. It just seems to be market sentiment, investor sentiment. She was at 0025, got on top of the 200, and that was it. She started to run. And I do believe on Friday we were at a high of 0091, which is over 300% run. But we did take a dip on Friday. It was a healthy dip of about 30%. You're going, what the heck is healthy about a 30% dip? That sounds like a crash to me. Well, honestly, when you look at the chart, you'll see she was at a very steep incline growing for the last few days, getting further and further away from all the other SMAs until she was too far away. You got to think of all these SMAs and the price as having rubber bands attached between them all. And when you get too far away, it'll just snap you right back. And the best you can hope for is that you land on a strong SMA or support, gather your bearings, and then start to run again. And that's what it looks like is going on right now. That's why we're looking at it. And in saying that, in full disclosures, I want to let you know I do own AITX. I've owned it for about a year. I've averaged down on it a couple of times, and I am way down on it. But that has nothing at all to do with why I am sharing this stock with you. The stock is hot, bottom line. So AITX, she finished the day on Friday pretty much at 0055, and as I said, she dropped about 30%. She is on the bottom tier of the OTC, the pink tier, the riskiest tier. The reason they're risky is there's not a lot of validated information down here. A lot. There's none. <laughs> you get disclosures, which are financials, but you didn't have a CPA look at them, so you really can't count on those numbers. You get news presses, but we get news presses all the time about things that never actually follow through. Personally, I take all this information with a grain of salt because really you've got to take the word of management for everything with pinks. Filings? Those are the hardest facts you're going to get, and that's what I lean on, those hard facts in the filings. We do have a transfer agent verified. That's a validated piece of information. The other one I'm always telling you to look for is a verified profile. Now, it's not here. It's not a deal breaker. It doesn't mean you can't trade it, but seeing it there would give us a little more reassurance. So what is AITX all about? Well, you know they're into security and robots and stuff, but we're going to take a closer look. I'm going to bypass this description and we're going to jump around to get our information here, starting down here. AITX has three subsidiaries, all which invent, build, and deploy solutions that perform facility and personal protection duties using artificial intelligence combined with purpose-built hardware, cloudware, mobile software, and other elements. AITX seeks to disrupt and evolve the security guarding and security integration industries with these solutions. The company has a 30,000 square foot corporate office and factory in Detroit, Michigan. They also have a service facility which is 2,000 square feet in Orange County, California. Now diving on over to their website, their website AITX.ai. Now, the company told us they have three subsidiaries, which they do, and they are now working on creating a fourth. The ones they currently have are RAD, which incorporates all of their stationary devices. Then they have RAD-M for all of their mobile vehicles and robots. Then they've got RAD-G, 
The G stands for group. They like to call this subsidiary Autonomous Remote Services Manifesto. What it really is, is they have combined their software with the hardware, got it into one product. Then they sell that product to other companies who can incorporate it into their products so that they can have security and cost efficiency as well. And the company can make money on royalties and licenses or just write out sales on these sort of products. The last subsidiary that they're working on is for residential security devices. Now, I don't know if you're going to have a robot walking around your property or what, but I'm sure it has more to do than just the doorbell and your porch. So let's take a look at some of their products. We're not going to look at all of them, but I want you to get a flavor of what they've got going on. As I said, they have these stationary devices. They can be implemented with green power like solar panels, or they can be hardwired up. They can be moved manually around parking lots, fields, wherever you actually need them. Well, they also have a product for campuses and universities. They've had products out there already. You may have heard about them. They are called blue light towers. Blue light towers were call boxes that you could use if ever you had a problem. You'd run over to them and there was a speaker that you would talk through and would talk to you. And then they would send somebody out to help you. Well, this lacked a lot of benefits. First off, they didn't know exactly where you were. It took time to find you. And most importantly, there were no cameras. There are no cameras. They have no idea what you look like, what the perpetrator looks like, what is happening. They're going to have to take your word for everything. Well, they tell us here to address these limitations, RAD has developed the ROSA security robot paired with the RAD Light My Way mobile phone application. ROSA, an autonomous security robot equipped with cameras, lights, a visual display so you can see messages or a person talking to you, and two-way communication, leverages AI to detect potential threats and intervene effectively. Its ability to issue verbal warnings, activate bright lights, and alert authorities autonomously sets it apart from traditional blue light systems. The RAD Light My Way app empowers students to request and activate virtual security escorts instantly using their smartphones. ROSA can pinpoint the student's location while a remote security officer, a real human, is watching on the monitors. This officer remains engaged until the student feels safe or reaches their destination. Furthermore, RAD Light My Way notifies other ROSA units to activate alert lighting along the student's walking route, providing an extra layer of protection. How about that, folks? So you know somebody's watching. Not just a robot, but you got a human watching the monitors, seeing what the robots are seeing, and they can respond as soon as you need them without you having to reach out and call for help. Focusing in on the mobile division now, they've got three different mobile devices. Two of them are vehicles with wheels. One is for security. They've got all their technology built into this device. And then they've got one for delivery. Now, we don't get a lot of information about the delivery vehicle. I'm going to presume it does not get all of the security technology put into it. And I really have no idea who they're delivering for, what they're going to be delivering, how far they can take these deliveries. No clue whatsoever. I want to focus in, though, on their all-terrain rad dog. Rad Dog is the one that can go up steps, down steps, over hills. You're not going to get that wheeled vehicle to do any of that. Rad Dog is a game changer for law enforcement agencies worldwide. Acting as a force multiplier with its nimble four-legged design and advanced external accessories, it can navigate challenging terrain, inaccessible areas, and dangerous environments, enhancing officer safety and helping protect communities. This robotic marvel conducts inspections, surveillance, and reconnaissance with unparalleled efficiency and at a remarkable low cost. By augmenting the capabilities of law enforcement personnel, Rad Dog will amplify their effectiveness in crime prevention, public safety, and emergency response. And this little guy has all the technology the big vehicle does as well. It has two-way communication, has a little monitor on it so you can actually see the people talking to you. Will follow you. You get too close to it, it'll back up. It'll keep following you so you can't get away from this thing. How fast it goes, I don't know about that either. 
But what's really got me excited, folks, is this guy right here, the Rad Pack. An easy add-on to your existing products to add Rad's comprehensive solutions to address your client security needs. Your hardware plus Rad's ecosystem equals more profits. Rad's engineers will help transform your offering to add modern analytics, mobile applications, and reoccurring monthly revenue model. Connecting peripherals like cameras, microphones, speakers, lights, or call buttons, routing them through Radpack on edge analytics and Rad site video management, linking your devices to Rad cloud solutions. Now, folks, they can do this with anything. They can do it with electric gas pumps. They can do it with hydrogen pumps. They can do it with every single light pole. As long as there's power, they'll find a way to adapt their technology into whatever it is you need. So the market really is wide open for this product. So we've got their stationary products, which are going to be used off and on over and over again. You've got their mobile devices, which are being picked up by big corporations. And then you've got their Rad Pack, which lots of companies are going to be able to make use of. Let's go take a look at that stock now. We're back here at the OTC markets where we began. We're looking at the relative volume now for AITX. It exploded on Friday. She's been doing an average every day over the last 30 days of about 75 million, which definitely is not under the radar. But Friday, she jumped up to virtually a half a billion shares. That's a lot of shares being moved, folks. That's a lot of excitement building up around this company. Share structure for AITX. Oh, that's not pretty. Authorized share count is 10 billion. That's every share the company owns, whether they're on the market or not but they have virtually all their shares on the market, 9.94 billion of them. The insiders only own 6 million shares. What? And we get all the rest, 9.9 .9 billion. Now this would scare the heck out of me, primarily because I'm invested in this. I want to average down. I see it climbing, now is the time to average down. But I'm scared to death that they're going to do a reverse split. And I have already been through 63 reverse splits in the last 20 months, literally losing tens of thousands of dollars, folks. But I did find this, and it is quite reassuring. I don't know when it came out, but this is the CEO of AITX, and he tells us, as you can see here, no reverse stock split before January 1st, 2025, unless the company uplist to the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. Well, I've seen no filings, no news presses about any uplistings. So I'm presuming they're going to keep their word and there is no reverse split until maybe the start of 2025. So right now should be a safe time to average down for this stock. Market cap for the company, we're at about $77 million. Financials for AITX. She's a coming, she's slow, but I'm a waiting for her. Ay, 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 I think I've waited long <laughs> enough. It didn't come up, folks. I tried three times, even tried another browser. Financials on OTC will not come up for AITX. But fear not, we can always find another place to get information online. So I've jumped over here to Yahoo Finance to get it. Back in 2021, the company was doing about $360,000 worth of business. A year later, they had quadrupled that to $1.4 million. And at the end of their fiscal year in 2023, February, they dropped just a little bit, just over $1.3 million. Now, this TTM is pretty interesting information. That stands for trailing 12 months. This gives us an idea of the revenues they're making from today back 12 months, a year's worth of revenues. Well, they've got $1.6 million on the books. That's an uptick from every single year before that. So it looks like their revenues are growing. To get a better feel for this, they did come out with another financial for November 30th, 2023. We're going to look at this. Looking at the assets for the company. At the end of November 2023, they had about $7 million. Total liabilities, a little more than that, $43 million. Which means we, the shareholders, are holding deficit of about $36 million. Revenues for the company are increasing. 
looking at the last three months from November 30th back, we did about $600,000. Compare that to the same period of time the year before, we are up. Same thing with the nine month period. We're at 1.3 million. Compare that to the year before, we are up. Now I did scroll all the way down at the bottom of this financial going to subsequent events. I love checking that out. This is where they put bonus information they couldn't squeeze into the financial because it came out after the financial. And you can get goodies. You can find mergers. You can find deals down there that aren't released in press releases yet. Sad to say, I didn't find anything here. So let's go take a look at the uh, disclosures for the company. They've got a lot of them. I'm going to give you a heads up right now, folks. They have got a ton of 8Ks. And the primary reason for this is every time they have a news press, they put out an 8K about that news press. So rather than jumping through all of these, we're just going to jump on over to that news. So we've got lots of news here, and I am not going to dive into any of this. It's pretty much self-explanatory. I've gone back here to February of 2024, and you can see they're making all sorts of deals. They're increasing production. RAD surpasses 400 unit fiscal year order intake milestone. Announces ATM, hook and chain, attack AI analytic. I did not know they were working with ATMs. January, software as a service revenue up 383%. We were just looking at November's. They now given us a heads up about January. Contracts in hand break 500,000 recurring monthly revenue. This is hot news, folks. Deploys record number of devices in February. Makes history with first robotic dog deployed to Taylor Police Department has begun 100 unit robot dog generation two production run. Now looking at the current news, from April 11th, the company penetrates further into healthcare market with multiple real order from top 25 healthcare provider. On the 25th of April, AITX provides sales guidance for new subsidiary RAD R, that is the residential subsidiary we were talking about, and they did primarily focus on the porch scenario. They say with Christmas coming around, <laughs> which is still a ways away, people are really concerned about it. And that's what they were talking a lot about. But they did say they had other avenues they were going to be approaching. And the last piece of news came out three days ago. AITX's RAD receives large real expansion order from Fortune 50 client. As you can see, folks, the news is consistent. They are making more, they are selling more, they are making more money. The business is growing, and that's what we're looking for. And the chart is growing as well. That's what we're really looking for. Let's go take a look at that now. Anybody else ready to do some charting? God, it's my favorite part of due diligence. Absolutely. We are looking at ticker AITX, basically the abbreviation for Artificial Intelligence Technology Solutions. And we're going to chart this on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. The abbreviation, TOS. So I've got this opened up to a one-day, one-year chart. It was back in June of last year, we had our 52-week high of about 1.5 cents. And it was also last year, in November, we had our 52-week low of 0019. Now off of that low bubble, she ripped 300% or more, hitting 006 up here on top of the 200-day SMA. But there was no way this was a breakout attempt because that 200-day SMA is just too steep. That's a slippery slope, literally. You get up on top of it and try to stand, you're going to tumble and fall and fall way down. Well, it came down to the 50, bounced around, and then dribbled down to this 200 haul. And this is where she sat for a while, was her 200 haul. Now, most of you are not familiar with this uh, SMA. This has as much authority and as much power as the 200-day SMA. They're cousins. The 200 haul does the same thing the 200-day SMA does. It takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together, and then puts more credence on current prices. So you end up with a different long-term, strong authoritative line on the charts. And penny stocks respect the heck out of the haul. A lot of times what we'll see is the price will come down to the haul, 
and they will use the hull as a springboard to go directly to the 200-day SMA and on top of it. And that's basically what we had here. She fell down to the 200, came underneath it, scooped up, and then launched over the 200, way up high. Came down no lower. The next bar did not come down any lower than where it started from. This tells me there's an 8 out of 10 chance she is going to run. She is looking for an opportunity. That opportunity is when the 200-day SMA goes flat. Well, it started to go flat here. It's not totally flat, but it's close, and she was willing to jump. She jumped on that nine-day SMA, and she took off. Look at all the volume that is coming in right now. Very, very strong. Oscillators are all climbing. However, we did have a 30% drop today, so our RSI has fallen. Now, because our price is way up here, as soon as we go down to our four-hour and 20-day, uh, we're not going to have anything here to draw our supports and resistances off of. There's nothing here. So this is the best place we're going to get them. But it's tough to do it on the daily chart when you're a day trader. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Fibonacci. And I'm going to poke the bottom of this run right here. I'm going to poke the bottom and then the top. And we're going to use these algorithmic supports and resistances to trade on. These are not attached to any historical price point, but they are legitimate supports and resistances the price will respect and we can use to trade on. So you can see what's going on here. She got up on top of this one here, tapped the second one here, which is at 78%. Here's the 50% mark. The price normally has a trend to run to the 50% point of a strong surge or drop. That's exactly halfway. A perfect average. The middle of anything is a perfect average. That's a perfect algorithm. So this is probably going to try to push up to ooh, just over a penny, folks. Just over a penny. Now, of course, every time she approaches one of these resistances, it will resist to cross. And she'll bobble and she'll hit it a few times and then jump up on top and work her way to the next one. And when she gets to this point, the one penny, you not only have the 50% support resistance to fight, you've got the mental block. Everybody sees it's going over a penny. So we're going to watch it close when she's getting there. And she is just underneath our 61% mark at 0094. Well, that was her high. Let's come on down to the lower time frames now. Let's look at our four hour, six month. So you can see, look at this. This is where she was six months ago. And that is one of her points right now. Looks like she actually bounced in that zone. We'll get a better look when we go down to the lower time zones. Again, she hit it right here. After she came down to that low, she came up to that bottom support of that big run we just showed you. Came back down, has been fighting the 200, but again, it's too steep. You can't get up on top of that or you'll just tumble and fall. She keeps trying and she is now down underneath. Now it's totally flat. Why isn't she trying to run? I don't know. Maybe people were upset right here. We had a big M for murder at the bottom of the M. You normally have a tail fall off, and we did have a fall off. Came down to a low here of about 0021. Off of that, we started working our way up slowly, and it was on the 17th. We had a 100% run going from 0025 up to 0052. Came back down onto our nine day SMA, perfect landing, floated on that, tagged the 20 day SMA for a push, needed a push. There it is, she got her push. She's back on her nine day SMA floating, and she is climbing on top of that nine day. You can see she's laying on it. What happened here, folks? She launched away from it. She pushed herself so far up, there was no more SMAs to support her. She had nothing underneath her. She left her seat. She was up in the air. She had to come down, and she came down fast and hard. So fast, she broke her nine-day SMA, but she did not come down to her 20, so it's not a total loss here. She's trying to hang on. Oscillators, we're still in the hot zone. Everything is way up high, real strong, but you can see things are cooling off right now with that huge drop we had today. All right, let's take a better look at that on our one hour, 20 day view. Look how flat she is here. This is called consolidation, a better word, accumulation. 
Look at all the green bars in there. People are buying up shares real cheap. Not a whole lot of volume. It's not going anywhere, but it is good sign. What we look for then is a spike in volume. You look for a spike in volume because it's all flat here. We had one jump here and then a jump there. This was a big one. And that jump, all the volume started coming in. This is when she took off going from that 0025 up to 005. Came back down to the 50 day, dipped underneath it, crouching before the pounce. Boom, she's off and running, floating on that nine day SMA. And then look here, she left it, left it in the dust, way up here. That's why she fell. You got to remember that the price and all these SMAs basically have rubber bands attached between them all. If you stretch too far, it'll pull you right back. And that's what happened here. She pulled back hard and fast, coming down through the 20, through the 200 haul, and down to the 50. Didn't exactly hit it. She's pulled back up and she is starting to climb on top of that 200 day haul. Oscillators show a lot of pullback, right? A lot of cooling off here. Everything is falling. The only nice thing we can say about any of the oscillators is our RSI is planed out, which means it stopped falling. In case you didn't know, the RSI is the price line. If we change all these bars and just make it a line like you get when you go over to Google and look up a ticker, that line on this chart would be exactly the same line down here. So whenever the price falls, your RSI falls, which is why everybody's excited when the RSI rises. All right, let's come on down to that five day, five minute. So this is not actually a bad chart until there. She was climbing nicely. We had a low bubble here of 0037 above our 200 day SMA, pretty much bouncing and floating on that 50 day SMA. And then she took one bounce here and took off. She went on to her nine day escalator, really not even paying any mind to the 20, just sitting on that nine day. And then up here on the top, she rolls around. Now, why do I think she fell? I'm thinking profit takers. You know, back here, she wasn't doing a whole lot. She was flat. Then she starts climbing generally, easily, steadily. Nobody's in a hurry to sell. Then she put it into second and third gear and starts climbing this mountain. Now she's taken some serious gains in two days. People who got in back here are happy with that gain right there. That's a 300% gain for them. So of course they're selling. And as soon as some started selling, a lot started selling. Look at that volume bar. It was a big sell bar. And it came all the way down here to the 200. Looks like it was trying to stop. Got pushed all the way down here, came back up, fell underneath the 200 again, did everything she could to get back up on top. But now every single SMA is coming down on her head. She'd need a miracle to break this. It would have to be one hot piece of news. Well, she didn't get it. So she fell back down here and here she hit a floor of a double zero five. She's turned around. She's gotten up on top of her 20 day SMA. And what I think she's going to do is what we saw right here accumulation, consolidation. This is going to go sideways until these SMAs come down, level out, turn around. Then she's going to grab that draft and start to climb with them, then get ahead of them and start to rip. Best case scenario. Oscillators, they say we're in recovery. Right there, we've got a crossover imminent on our PPO. We have our MACD about ready to cross our signal line and our RSI has come deep out of the basement, folks. That weighs way down there at 25. 30 is the floor. I mean, zero is actually the floor, but we don't want it any lower than 30. She was at 25 and has doubled that now. She is at 50 and climbing. So I'm thinking this is going to be a runner, folks. I think she's selling a lot more. She's producing a lot more. Her revenues are growing. The chart has shown excitement. She's had a healthy pullback, a buying opportunity. You know, nobody wanted to get in on this. You know it's going to come back down. When do you get in? 
after it comes back down and shows signs of starting to climb. Now we see signs of starting to climb, but they're not secure yet. You want to make sure you're on top of one of these strong SMAs, the 50 or the 200 haul. You get on top of those, then you've got a strong chance of running. You get on top of that 200 haul, I would give you an 8 out of 10 chance of running on this chart. Now I gave you a lot of information about the company, but you know I didn't cover everything. Even if I tried to cover everything, chances are I would not cover everything. So it's always prudent to follow behind me doing your own due diligence. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.